So, I saw Avengers Endgame last night with my wife. Now, I didn't hate it, okay? It's a little strong to say that I hated Avengers Endgame, but I, and I don't really like throwing cold water on, on people's favorite movies and the things that they love all, a lot. Well, I won't say I don't like doing it. I, I don't enjoy it more than I should. In any case, Avengers Endgame, it is one million hours long. It is the Wagnerian ring cycle, and it has moments, but there are a bunch of spoilers coming, guys. It does not work as a film. It does not work as a film. It basically destroys all of the main characters that you actually care about in favor of a bunch of characters you don't. It's got the Star Wars problem. So the new Star Wars basically took all the characters you like and killed them off to make room for characters that you don't actually care about. So here's a little bit of the trailer, and then I'll explain all of the problems with Avengers Endgame. Yeah, it seems like a thousand years ago. I fought my way out of that cave. Became Iron Man. Realized I loved you. I know I said no more surprises, but I was really hoping to pull off one last one. The world has changed. None of us can go It relies back. on the nostalgia that you have for the last 16 films, and it is a cool thing that they were somehow able to put together 16 films that led all the way up to this final film. Like, that's, that's really a neat achievement on a, on a cinematic level. The problem is none of this works, and they destroy all of your favorite characters, with probably the exception of Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, who finally gets a character arc that is worthy of her acting skills. So here are all the spoilers. So Iron Man obviously plots his, right? At the end, Iron Man dies. Iron Man's character arc is the only interesting thing in this movie, but they totally botch it. The reason that they botch it is because Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, for all of his movies, the struggle for Iron Man has been not, do I go save the world or am I selfish? That solves in movie one. Right? The rest of the movies are all about, will he settle down with, with Potts? Will he, will he settle down? Will he build a family? Can he contain himself? Will he become a solid citizen? Right? That was the struggle of Robert Downey Jr. When was he going to grow up and be an adult? That was the question of Robert Downey Jr. And after Thanos snaps his fingers in the first 45 minutes of the movie, you find out that Robert Downey Jr. has gotten married to Pepper Potts and that he has actually had a kid with her. And this is good, right? This is a good setup. And then... There, and then it arises through really dumb coincidence. Hey, guys, have you ever had the idea of time travel? Have you thought about it? Like, seriously? And then people, and then Robert Downey Jr. is like, oh, man, well, I guess, and I haven't thought about it. It's impossible. Well, I have five minutes here. So in five minutes, he comes up with a time travel plan. So forget about how silly that is. He comes up with a time travel plan in the next five minutes. It's an Avengers film. You can't look for you know, them to, him to spend four years trying to figure out how time travel works or anything like that. But here is the problem. Now, Tony Stark has stakes. The stakes are, and they, they present this choice. It's, it's ready to be made. The stakes are, do you go back and change the past and thus lose what you have built for yourself in the aftermath of you becoming a mature human being? Lose a daughter. Do you sacrifice your own daughter to save the world? Right? That's a real moral choice. But then they obviate that choice in the next 30 seconds of the film where they explain that if they go back and change the past, it won't actually change this timeline, and therefore... Tony Stark's kid will still be alive and his wife will still be alive and everything will be hunky-dory. So now this just becomes another Iron Man film where it's about Tony Stark risking himself to go save the world, but there are no heightened stakes at all. So you've built up to his final character transformation into a responsible human being. And the question is gonna be, now is he even more responsible than the responsible human being? He's built a family. Now is he willing to sacrifice his own family and his own happiness in order to save the world? And the answer is, we're not gonna make him answer the question because you don't have the, the guts to actually pose that choice. So that's the problem with Iron Man's character. Captain America's character, the problem with Captain America's character is they've always gotten it wrong. So Captain America is basically John McCain. He's supposed to be this crotchety old guy in a young guy's body, a, guy, a man out of time. Captain America has never felt like a man out of time to me. He's just felt like generic superhero who's kind of dopey and a good guy. Right? That's the way Chris Evans has played him. And this isn't just Chris, because Chris Evans dislikes me. Chris Evans, apparently, like the, the, the people who write the script, basically felt that he would just be like any normal guy. Like if you saw Captain America without the uniform, you wouldn't know he's Captain America. He's just a guy. Well, that's not how the character is in the comics, and that's not how the character should be here. So the stakes for Captain America aren't extraordinarily high. Now, Captain America's ending, where they have him basically go back in time, and then he is able to, and then he basically just stays back in time with the love of his life. I was fine with that. I really didn't have a huge problem with his ending. I thought his ending was the most appropriate. I thought Iron Man 
dying, even that would have been appropriate if they had set it up properly. That was okay. The person who I really couldn't stand what they did with him was Thor. So I, what, what they did with Thor makes no sense on a character level. So I understand you guys wanted the joke. You wanted Thor with the dad bod. Got it. Okay, you want him to be fat and burp a lot and be Big Lebowski. Okay, it's funny for the first five minutes. And then it's, this is not Thor. Right? We've had several Thor movies at this point. Thor's problem has never been lack of courage. It's, it's always been that he is afraid that he does not have the moral fiber to be the leader. It's been that he's afraid of leadership. That's been his moral conflict, is that he's been afraid of leadership the whole time, and leadership has to be thrust upon him, and then he realizes he's a leader. But instead, they decided to go the direction of, not that he doesn't want to take leadership, but that he, he's afraid to participate himself, that he won't even participate. And so they make him basically a drunk weakling. And it's silly. And you never actually get to see Thor really in action because they've decided to saddle him with a fat suit for the joke, which is, again, not in character and also very silly. Like, I was waiting for the point where Thor would just kind of take the hammer or the, the ax and slam it on the ground. The lightning comes in. He's back to being old Thor, right? I was waiting for that sort of transformation. That never really happens. And in fact, the best thing about Thor is in the first five minutes of the film when he kills Thanos, right? The, the first five minutes of the film where he, where he chops Thanos' head off, that's the best thing that he's got in the entire film. The rest of the time, he's basically wasted, which is a pity because Chris Hemsworth can actually hold his own on screen. I don't think Chris Evans can. I think Chris, Chris Hemsworth can with Robert Downey Jr., but they don't give him anything to do except be funny, which he is. I mean, in that, that there's a final kind of thing with Chris Pratt and Chris Hemsworth that's very funny. Okay, but he was supposed to be more than a funny character. If you watch the first Thor film directed by Kenneth Branagh, it was supposed to be far more serious. Also, as my business partner, uh, Jeremy Boring, has pointed out, that, uh, that it's pretty obvious from the film that they wanted Anthony Hopkins to come back and do a scene with Chris Hemsworth, and Chris Hemsworth, they, they weren't able to get Hemsworth to do it, so instead they brought back Rene Russo for a conversation, and, and it really doesn't work fantastically well. Thanos is built up in the first Avengers film as this guy with an interesting backstory and with an actual, with an actual rationale, right? He feels that balance has to be brought back because he lived on a planet where overpopulation was a problem, so he snaps his fingers, half the people are gone. Balance is restored. Okay, now they bring us back to old Thanos, who still has that same mission, and they basically just turn him into Big Baddie, right? He, now he doesn't have an interesting backstory. Now he's just a sadist. And there's a line near the end of the film where he turns to Robert Downey Jr. or Captain America. I, can't, I think it's maybe Captain America. And he says, I, you know, your little planet, I'm going to enjoy destroying it. Okay, come on. Come on. Like, if you want to draw a good villain, then you can't just make them a sadist. Every bad villain, like Steppenwolf from Justice League, is just a sadist who wants to do bad stuff. But Thanos had an interesting backstory. And the, the thing about Thanos is that Thanos was willing to sacrifice his own daughter for what he believed in. Right, Thanos, he's immoral, he's a bad person, but he's willing to make a sacrifice they don't even ask Robert Downey Jr. to make in the second Avengers film. So that is a problem as well. Now, there are two characters who I do think are treated well by the script. Black Widow is treated well by the script. Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner, is treated well by the script. Um, Carol Danvers, the, the Captain Marvel character, I just have to say that she's insanely boring. So I didn't actually see the Captain Marvel film. I'm intending on going and seeing it at some point. I didn't really feel the compunction to see it. But in any case, she's in the film, but she's basically a block of wood that breaks things. Right? That, that's what Carol Danvers does. She doesn't have any character. You don't know why she's there. She, you don't know her motivations. She just flies around and she smashes things. All right. And she's, and she's deus ex machina. Another point made by my business partner, we had a conversation about this this morning, is that one of the problems with, with this film is that you also don't know the comparative power of the characters. So it's like every character has a power that is equally powerful, despite the fact that they don't. I mean, there's a scene near the end where the Avengers headquarters is hit by one million missiles, and somehow Ant-Man, who is a human, and, and Jeremy Renner, who is a human, are fine. They're like the bottom of 20 stories. They're fine. Totally cool. That makes no sense. And there's a scene where Thanos, who does not have the Infinity Gauntlet at this point, is fighting off Captain America and Thor and Iron Man. He's fighting off all three of them. Well, if you remember back to the first Avengers film, he barely holds off Thor alone. Right? Thor shows up, and Thor nearly takes him out while he has the Infinity Stones. So if he doesn't have the Infinity Stones, he's basically just a big bad guy. So why are all three of them unable to take him out? And then there was the NFL ad recapitulation, where they're trying to run the gauntlet between players. And it's like, oh, okay, I understand you're doing fan service. Look, there's Black Panther. Ooh, there's Spider-Man. Oh, look, they're handing it to this other character who we don't care about. Yay! And then they're just kind of throwing in the gauntlet just to remind you that all these characters exist. 
Okay, the center of this universe was always supposed to be Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. They turned Thor into a loser. Captain America is boring, and Iron Man, they don't give a full motivation and prohibit him from making a proper choice. Now, there are, again, scenes in this movie that are quite good. The scene between the Hulk, for example, the Mark Ruffalo character, and, uh, and Tilda Swinton, uh, the, doctor, the, the character from Doctor Strange, right? that's actually a good scene. Right, the, the scene, the, there are a couple, the scene with Robert Downey Jr. and his dad, that's a good scene too. But overall, I felt like it was a mishmash. I felt like it didn't really work. I understand that for uber fans of Marvel, I'm not speaking as an uber fan of Marvel. I've seen virtually all of these films. I think that Captain Marvel is the, is the only one that I have not seen. Um, but uh, there are uber fans who are sitting there like just picking out the Easter eggs. Oh, remember when they did that in this movie? And then we're flashing back to that movie now. Isn't that cool? Isn't that funny? And there, there's, some, there's a lot of stuff there, but that's fan service. It's not filmmaking, and it doesn't give an emotional resonance. The emo only emotional resonance, really, is Iron Man's death, which I guess is what it was supposed to be. And even there, I felt like it was diminished somewhat by the fact that he basically just dies in a normal adventure story that could have taken place in any of the other Iron Mans. Also, final critique. I don't feel the necessity to have a giant battle with all of the people in the universe at the end of every movie. I didn't like it at the end of Aquaman. I don't like it here. In fact, the battle was much more interesting when it was just a couple of people fighting before all of these things show up, before Doctor Strange unleashes the beast and all these people come walking through back from the dead. It felt throughout the movie like there were no stakes. And this is my big problem. I didn't get anything that I thought was really unexpected. I felt like they deliberately lowered the stakes, not heightened the stakes with that decision that I referred to about Iron Man. I, I felt like it was, it was blasé and bland. I didn't feel like anyone was really in any danger. And even Iron Man's death is sort of inevitably foreshadowed by what happens to the Hulk when he puts on the, the gauntlet. So yeah, I, I wish I had liked the movie more since I spent three hours of my life on it and 50 bucks. The tickets for IMAX were expensive, man. But I, but I will say that I understand why people enjoyed it if you're a super fan, but I'm not going to, uh, but I, I am not up with the, this is great.